joining us now is lawmaker Ahmed Jaha. He is one of the lawmakers moving for the deadline extension. Also with us is senior economic analyst and lecturer at Bayes University, Dr. Tochuku Okafo. Thank you both gentlemen for being on the news tonight. We do appreciate it. Uh, let me begin with you, lawmaker uh, Jaha. Uh, you are pushing for an extension. Yes. And it's six, seven days to deadline. Mm -hmm. Nigerians will be wondering why our representatives are just making this push now. Yes, uh, actually, I just came back from my constituency yesterday. Anything you see me or watch me saying on the floor of the house is a clear reflection of the opinion of my constituents. I was in my constituency for about five days and doing mobilization so that people can actually uh, take their money to their various banks and deposit them accordingly if they do have one account uh, or the other. Unfortunately, I realized that a substantial part of my constituents uh, do not have accounts and at the same time they have uh, some money with them that they do day-to-day -day transaction in my constituency. And I equally realize the reason why they are doing this is not because of anything. For the past 10 years, it's in the public notice that in my constituency we have no single uh, bank branch of any bank you can think of in Nigeria. What's your constituency again? Just my so constituency is mm. Chibok, Dambua, and Goza Federal constituency. Okay, in Borno State. In Borno of State. Alright, let's uh, bring in uh, Tochuku Okafo. I mean, you are the economist. You would understand how all of this, I mean, this policy will impact, uh, very importantly, the Nigerian uh, population, whether as a trader, businessman, or even politician. Now that the, the lawmakers are seem to be mounting pressure on the central bank to extend the date but the cbn says no it's going to be 31st of january so the question is what should the central bank of nigeria be doing now uh, to enforce this policy uh, because it seems the banks uh, you know from all indication from what we're hearing may be colluding you know to make sure this new currency gets in the hands of uh, you know the high and mighty Okay, so um, <clears throat> first off, I think um, I always say this is a clear case of um, good intentions, bad execution, right? Um, no one is blameless in this whole um, event, right? Both the, from the lawmakers, general public, and the CBN. But um, if we're going to keep it to the bi-directional relationship between the, law, um, the general public and the CBN, the first thing you need to know is the, 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 the general public's fault is considering the fact that there was a lot of speculation when the uh, hoarding of money was going on all through last year. And if you notice that inflation rate has been rising or was rising till December. Now the CBN using all the monetary policy techniques, they could, couldn't do that because I think 3.23 trillion was outside the system and only 1.7 trillion was within the system. And that is not sufficient enough for the CBN to embark on their policies. However, if you look at it from the angle of the general public, the timing is actually actually kind of poor, which I agree, but there is no other time to do it because if you notice, since the um, um, commencement of the release or the gradual release of the Naira, we noticed that there was a tepid decrease in inflation to, I think, um, 21.3. So the CBN, while trying to, and if you notice in the MPC meeting today, the CBN governor was still adamant and said that um, interest rate will still be tightened from um, until they notice any significant change. So the, the idea behind it is, it is going to work, but the problem is it's going to work in the short and medium term because in the long term, we are going to come back to what we are. If you reduce what is um, being withdrawn in the ATM, over time, people will still amass this amount. So by 2025, we are probably going to be having the same situation again. But in the short run and in the medium term, it is very accurate because right now, the amount of money in circulation is actually going to be controlled. And the CBN is also trying to enable financial inclusion, especially like Honorable said in some constituents that have not been adequately financially included both via the mobile services as well as the e-payment so this is a form of financial inclusion into the IT sector for those that are not financially included to be included because with that um, limited amount from the ATMs and over-the-counter everybody will be 
compelled to use um, mobile apps and um, e-transactions. However, again, like I said, the timing is going to be reflective in our next GDP report because there is definitely going to be a decline. But with the MPC's decision today, it was uh, a step in the right direction, but also very harsh because they are trying to limit um, the distance for investors between interest rates and inflation rates. So pushing it closer has reduced it to, I think, 3.28%. So while the CBN is doing it, it's again, I keep saying it, good intentions, bad execution. If they can, the um, okay, 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 Doctor Tochuku. I mean, uh, people listening to you will be wondering if that's true, if that's correct, if to say that this policy, you know, will uh, mop up the money in circulation, monitor the money in circulation, because as it stands, the CBN cannot tell us who got stock of the new notes and how they've utilized it, and exactly and how much exactly. is in circulation. But let of me the bring in notes. let me bring in the lawmaker back into this conversation. Uh, lawmaker Jaha, yes. in the words of the Speaker of the House of Representatives today, Femi Bajabi Amila, he said, "Somebody is not giving us the full story. Yes. Is it the banks that are hoarding, uh, or is it the CBN that doesn't understand the extent of what needs to be done?" Those were the words of Femi Bajabi Amila today, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And that brings me to my question, lawmaker. We do have committees in the National Assembly in charge of finance and banking, correct me if banking I'm wrong, and, finance, yes. and they do carry out oversight functions. Yes. What have these committees been doing? What did they find out? Uh, this um, whole transition was first announced in October, and then the new notes were supposed to come into circulation in Dece on December 15th, yes. the deadline being January 31. Yes. What did the committees find out? What did they do? They did not raise any alarm, and it's seven days to go, and everybody is forcing CBN to move the deadline. Yes, uh, actually, I cannot t say exactly what the committee has been doing all this while, as far as CBN and uh, monetary policies in the country is concerned because is, the committee is charged with the responsibility of doing all these things to make sure that CBN follow the rules and operate within the law establishing them. One of the laws is whenever they want to introduce any policy, they must mm -hmm. regularly discuss such policy with the National Assembly. Okay. And they should do so through their standing committee. So actually I cannot comment on that because I'm not a member of that committee, but as far as the House is concerned, we are not aware we just woke up early in the morning and realized that CBN wants to change the color of our currency. CBN wants to introduce cash cashless policy. Before you realize what is up, that is why we kept on inviting the CBN governor to come and explain. Had it been the committee has been uh, briefing the house properly, I don't think we'll be requesting CBN management to appear for uh, explanation. And another thing from my understanding is, CBN is putting the card before the horse. We are not prepared for this thing. They know, and everybody knows. We are not prepared for it. If you are copying something from somewhere, try and understand the infrastructural development level of that particular country before you bring it to your country. We don't have the infrastructure to implement this. It. It's a very nice policy. It's a very good policy, but you cannot do a fire approach. And How get long do you think will be enough? At, at least six months from here. This what? is what we have requested. In the House, there was a motion by Sada Soli Jibia, a member representing Jibia and Kaita from Katsina State, that it should be extended by one year. But members oh. resolve that it should be reduced to only six months. And let MFLA and his team understand that they are working for Nigerians. They are working mm -hmm. and they are being paid by taxpayers' money. So taxpayers are saying this time is not enough for them to swap their currency. Types, right. uh, taxpayers are saying this policy is very harsh for implementation. So as far as we are concerned, Imefele should understand that he is working for people and people are not interested in what he is doing now. And people are not saying that they are averse to, to CBN's decision to embark on these policies. But the most important thing, CBN should understand that the approach, the implementation system, mm. the implementation technique is very, very wrong as far as the current Nigeria is concerned and as far as the current infrastructure uh, available in the banking industry is concerned. All right, um, uh, Dr. Okafo, well, we heard from the lawmakers there that uh, it's a phasing out situation and not forcing out. Uh, ad address that. And the objective, you know, of the central bank in coming up with this Naira redesign and all that, will it not be defeated if they had six months window to allow Nigerians actually swap, you know, their currency or exchange the, the, the old for the new? And who are the likely losers if the Central Bank of Nigeria does not extend the dates? 
Okay, first off, um, um, I totally agree that um, the six-month window is um, actually adequate because this is more of a fire brigade approach and it's going to have a, a ricochet effect. Six months is actually adequate, right, to, to actually allow um, gradual phasing out and not put pressure on the printing and minting. But um, the, the, this um, um, current policy is going to have a greater impact on the general public. I mean, in the first two months, the general public is going to be really impacted. Couple with the whole um, economic quagmires that we're dealing with, um, the fuel scarcity, uh, uh, food crisis, and whatnot. But the general public is going to feel it. But uh, like I said, in the short term, the benefits are going to come out because we are going to notice that inflation is definitely going to decline. But with regard to investment and GDP, GDP is going to decline uh, significantly in the next uh, um, GDP report. And we're also going to see that investors are actually going to feel the pinch of this whole uh, policy. But again, in the long, in the medium term, the results are going to come out but it, uh, like I always say it's not really about um, what we feel now it's about what is good for the economy in the long run that's just the basic outcome of this his whole policy but implementation timing is very very poor very quickly uh, you know before we wrap how best really would you say that the central bank of Nigeria should have gone about this policy this narrow redesign policy In, um, 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 our developed um, countries, right, like the U.S. I mean, the last time the U.S. Um, redesigned their own um, dollar, I think it took about three years. And currently, they are actually redesigning their next dollar. Since 2013, the next dollar redesign release is going to be 2025. That is to show you how significant this kind of decisions are. It's not um, like going to buy fried rice in a restaurant and just coming out. You need to sit down with a research team, see the current economic implications, see those that will be affected because at the end of the day, like Honorable said, it's about the people. If you're doing it for the people, then you have to include the people's voices in it. And as much as yes you have the idea behind it and because you're in a comfortable position it does not mean that the rest of the economy is as comfortable as you assume so most times it's always good to give that lag period where it's sufficient enough for everybody beyond reasonable doubt and again i say beyond reasonable doubt to be able to have disbursed every form of funds in their hand and be able to bring in these notes that will have this the, the impact and the efficacy will be actually felt by the general public rather than and feel like it's a punishment because right now everybody is feeling like they're, like they're being punished for something they did, they did or did not commit. So I think right now, even if the benefit starts coming out, many Nigerians are not really going to appreciate it because, I mean, it's, it's kind of harsh on them because we're in January and mm. you're having back-to-back. -back, um, it's um, definitely uh, not fried rice, Dr. Uh, you know this. Fried it's right. not, not fried rice, <laughs> but let's bring in the lawmaker very quickly to wrap up. Yes. Lawmaker, uh, what's... What are the options at your disposal? The CBN governor, you heard him today, says the deadline is sacrosanct. And just to mention that the provisions of sections 2B, section 18A, section 19, subsection A and B of the CBN Act of 2007 does give the CBN the power to do to carry out this policy. Mm -hmm. The only consent he needs is that of President Muhammad Buhari, which he sought and got. And the president says 90 days is enough for this transition. So what are the lawmakers going to do? Yes, that is not going to stop us from doing our constitutional function. Because from our, 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 our prescribed or described role, we have every reason to invite any government official who is going to embark on any policy and tell him or her the opinion of our constituents. This is the essence why we have been uh, voted for. Mm. One Another thing, we have already resolved to invite the CBN side by side with other members of the Bankers Committee tomorrow by 3 p.m. to sit down and deliberate this thing and see how possible we are going to extend this thing for another six months in the interest of the country and in the interest of Nigerians and in the interest of our constituents. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, very well said. Ahmed Jaha Babawo is a lawmaker and uh, Dr. Tochuko Okafor, Senior Economic Analyst uh, at the Bayes University, Senior Lecturer at Bayes University right here in Abuja. Thank you both of you gentlemen for joining us. Thank you.